Much of the serious crime we see in central Illinois is committed by a small percentage of people. That's my biggest fear. Every day when I come home is, you know, is my door still locked? Is he going to be hiding around the corner? She's talking about her ex-husband, a man who has a lengthy criminal history, including arson, burglary, and domestic battery. Those charges date back to the early 1990s, crossing several county and state lines. So how does one person continue to be released and reoffend for three decades? Our Target 3 investigative reporter Renee Cooper has been working to answer that question for months now. She's with us, Renee. That woman in Charleston is not alone. Jennifer, this story is just one of many involving repeat offenders. We've heard frustration about numerous cases, and tonight we're taking a closer look at habitual offenders from the perspective of the prosecuting attorneys and the victims whose trauma doesn't disappear when a case is closed. Jody Gravel met her ex-husband, Alfie Vadalero about three years ago. They used to live here at Gravel's house in Charleston. He had told me that he had, he had had two DUIs. So I didn't have his license. Um, I knew he had a couple other um, instances, things that I had looked up in Coles County. I had seen all of those were the records that I had seen at that point. Things escalated this year. In April, Charleston police were called to their home for a reported domestic battery. The affidavit says Gravel told the officer Vatalero was drunk and they started arguing over something on his phone. He had gotten up and I, I picked up his phone and went towards the kitchen and he punched me in the back um, very hard. I landed on my face and he immediately jumped on my back, grabbed my hair. Police say they found Vatalero a couple of blocks away. We just want to know what's going on. After initially denying it, police say Vatalero admitted he pushed his wife down but denied hitting her or pulling her hair. Vatalero was arrested that night. And less than a month later, he was arrested again for breaking into another woman's home. Her um, sliding glass door was shattered and her house looked ransacked. At that point, Gravel ran a nationwide criminal background check on him through a private company. Through my own search of public court records and Freedom of Information Act requests, I was able to confirm at least two DUI convictions, a stolen car, a previous domestic battery charge, property damage, and two more burglaries, among other minor offenses. And that's just in three Illinois counties. An arson charge stems from Sacramento, California in 1993, where he got his toughest sentence to date, six years in prison. I was in shock. I, I just didn't, no idea who he was. But of the convictions that got him prison time, it's unclear how much time he served. The State Department of Corrections denied that request for information. Calculating what uh, a defendant is going to serve in the Department of Corrections anymore is a very educated guess. They've left a lot of that up to the department because of resources. That's plain and simple. Um, no one wants to pay anymore for prison, uh, but everybody wants you know, offenders to go to prison. So there's the catch. As the state's attorney, Jesse Danley is the chief prosecutor in Coles County, where the majority of Vatalero's cases have been tried. Do you feel like your office leans toward the tougher end or the more lenient end? Or? We do our best to be fair. That's all I can say. Danley says although past crimes are a factor in sentencing, at some point people should be rid of their past. And prior to the alleged domestic in April, Vatalero's last felony offense was 11 years ago. So the older his criminal or her criminal history is, the less weight it has. Champaign County State's Attorney Julia Reitz backs that up, although she says prior criminal history is rarely allowed to be used in trial. We don't want the jury to find somebody guilty of theft because they've committed theft before. She says commonly reoccurring offenses like domestic violence are typically an exception. And again, you have to ask you know somebody to come in and talk about something that happened to them in the past. That said, as offenses pile up, the prosecution has the power to recommend increasingly tough sentences. Each felony class has a range of possibilities, including jail time or probation. And beyond that, with repeated offenses like battery, extended term sentences become available. That's basically double the regular range. Are those maximums tough enough? Is jail even the answer? Uh, there's the lock them up and throw away the key school of thought. I don't want to live in a world where we just um, throw away 
people and we don't believe that people inherently have the ability to change and move forward positively. Reitz adds the prosecutor's ability to prove a case is just as important to the outcome of a sentence as criminal history is. And while those accused are of crimes await sentencing, they do have the option to pay to spend that time free from a jail cell. Coming up in the second half of the newscast, I'll explain how that can complicate public safety. Jessica. Back. All right, we'll see you then. Renee, thank you. We introduced you to a woman named Jody Gravel in the first half of the newscast. Her ex-husband has a decades-long criminal record. She says she fears for her safety, and since she's known him, he has spent no more than two months in jail. Target 3 investigative reporter Renee Cooper has been researching repeat offenders for months now. She's with us again. Renee, you already explained how prosecutors set sentences is what about setting bail sure when a serious crime is committed that person is arrested and brought to jail once a cash bond is set they get the option to pay to go home until there's a conviction and if a case goes to trial it could be a years-long process meanwhile some alleged offenders roam free Jody Grable's ex-husband was arrested in April for allegedly shoving and hitting her during an argument. A few days later, Alfie Vandalero was released from the Coles County Jail on bond. He paid $250. Within three weeks, he was arrested again. That time for burglary. Since then, Vandalero bonded out of jail again. He has no regard for the law whatsoever. I don't know. I don't feel like I know him, so I don't know what to expect out of him. Um, that makes the fear worse because I don't know what he's capable of. Fast forward to August, Gravel says Vatalero kept reaching out to her. He sent her almost 50 messages in a single night. That violated the order of protection Gravel has against him. He was arrested, and for that, he has been in the Coles County Jail ever since. I'll own every single mistake I've ever made, my office ever made. I will. I'll own it. Um, but this is not one. You know, we, we set bond. Um, in an amount that's based on a lot of different factors. And as Coles County State's Attorney Jesse Danley explains, those factors are spelled out in state statute. In this Mr. Vadalaro's uh, case, and I mean, it, it is consistent with the statute. Um, and when it was very clear a month later that he committed a residential burglary, do I wish he'd been in custody so it hadn't been committed? Of course. But he posted bond. Looking at the three offenses Vadalaro is accused of in 2021, the bond amount increased each time. For the domestic battery, bond was set at $2,500. Vatalero paid the 10% required by state statute, $250. For the residential burglary, bond increased to $50,000. He paid $5,000. And for violating Gravel's order of protection, the court set bond at $100,000. And that's the question, is not how I feel about it. It's, am I following the law? The people of Charleston, at least in my opinion, are uh, tired of justice not being served properly. This group held a peaceful protest for higher bonds and tougher penalties in August outside of the Coles County Courthouse. For the most part, they were protesting what they say is a lack of action around a young woman's death. Jason Jennings is accused of drug-induced homicide for the death of his 26-year-old girlfriend, Nicole Carver, in September 2020. That's a Class X felony. The Charleston man made bail about a week and a half after his arrest this August, almost a year after Carver's death. Danley couldn't comment much on the case, but told me, quote, it's been a complicated ongoing investigation for some time. He tells me, quote, he couldn't file charges a moment before he believed he could prove the case in trial. I do not feel that the bond he received was... Um, in accordance with the crime. I find that disappointing and insulting. Public record shows the state requested Jennings' bond be set at $250,000. The court ended up setting it at $50,000. The judge has to consider these factors. The state has to argue um, these factors. Um, do I agree with all of them? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, do I want um, higher bonds than, I, than the judge gives me sometimes? Absolutely. But that's a tough thing to describe to anybody, the public or otherwise, that's not in the courtroom every day. Gravel says the more often domestic abusers are released, the less likely women are to report it. Because if it just infuriates the abu abuser and they don't get any protection, then either they're going to get hurt worse or they're going to go back and just stay in it because they have no other options.
Here's an update for you. Court records now show Vandalero recently pled guilty to the burglary and domestic battery charges. In the same hearing, the order of protection violation was dropped, and he was sentenced to a total of six years for the two charges. Grable says it still feels minimal. Now, there's much more of this story, including how state bail statute is changing soon over on our website. For now, back to you. All right, Renee, thanks for that story. The ballots are in. What's striking?